to discuss today the topic of secrecy in the craft and in magic. Secrecy means to make sacred. To keep something secret is to keep it sacred and to thus give it power and to give it much power in our lives. The more sacred something is, the more actual power it actually holds. But we have this concept that secrecy equals shame. And that has to do a lot of times with with family secrets and uh, things that we've done that we regret and and issues in our in our present and our past that we feel ashamed of that we don't want anybody to to know about and then we we keep those things secret and then we make them very powerful we try to make sacred that which is profane basically and that's where the the concept of you're only as sick as your secrets comes from see if you have a shame based secret you are actually giving great, tremendous amount of power to that which you are ashamed of. So, one of the best things that that happens in psychotherapy is a good therapist will have you basically confess all of your secrets. Same thing in in uh, in Catholic confession. The reason why it's so purging, even if you don't believe in any of the 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 concepts, the, their mystical concepts of, of, of the priest being able to forgive you uh, as, a, as, a, uh, as somebody who has been given that power by God, basically, through their ordination. The whole idea of confessing that which you feel guilty about releases the power of that thing, and then you, it no longer has power over you. That's how you were forgiven of those so-called sins. So anything that we're feeling guilty about, anything we're ashamed of, it's a good idea to not hold those things secret. Now, I'm not saying that it's a good idea to go tell everybody about the things that you're ashamed of and the things you feel guilty of, but it's good to have a therapist or a good friend or, or somebody that you, can, that you can unload on a little bit, that you can confess your sins to, so that you are no longer bound by those things. You're no, they're no longer running you. However, when you're dealing with all of this stuff, this whole concept of 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 uh, of not holding secrets that that will harm you, we misinterpret that as to think that that it's not okay to have any secrets at all. And we get a lot of this. There's a lot of in our sociology um, that if you're married or if you have a significant other, that you shouldn't have any secrets from one another. That you should everybody should know everything about each other. And I don't think that that's healthy, personally, and I don't find any metaphysical principle that would support that. In fact, there are certain things that are good secrets, that are, that, that, that are things that you do hold sacred and dear, that I don't think are anybody's business. I don't care if they're your mate or if they're your mother, if they're your anything, that, that it's just between you and spirit. And that's where we get into the power of secrecy. A lot of times, just our involvement in the craft in and of itself is something that many of us hold dear and secret and make say and keep sacred as a secret. We don't let anybody know what we're doing. Now, on top of the fact that a lot of times in in this society, even though we're a lot more liberal and 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 uh, and and accepting of one another than we ever have been. Uh, what we do, people like us, the, the people involved in the craft, it's like the world's not ready for us. It's like the world is not quite ready to hear this stuff. And it's almost better for us to be effective if we don't let everybody know what we're up to. Not because we're ashamed of it, I'm very clear on that, that we're not ashamed of what we do, but because we are not ready to profane it and have to defend it. Remember, we have a line in, in our sacred literature called the Landmarks that the craft needs no defense. If anybody speaks of the craft to down it, we, we, we remind ourselves that the craft needs no defense. Well, nobody would have to speak of the craft to down it unless we were trying to present it to people who weren't ready to hear about it. So I have a real, per, per, my personal policy is I don't discuss it with anybody. 
even on these po- podcasts, this is kind of uh, this is kind of something that's a, a little bit uh, difficult for me. It was very difficult for me to do this, and I was I was actually led to do this intuitively. I was intuitively inspired and led to start doing these podcasts as a service. But it's not something that I was uh, initially very comfortable with doing. Even when I was teaching public lectures and public classes on a regular basis, that was very difficult for me because I, I didn't like to be that out in the open and let anybody you know who cared to know uh, who walked into to my lecture know who I was and what I was all about because it just didn't feel comfortable. It felt like this was something that was very sacred and special to me. Not only that, but I didn't feel like letting a lot of people who may or may not understand what I was doing in on my secret because I didn't want to be put in the position to have to defend myself or to have to defend the craft because that's not what it's for. That's not its purpose. Its purpose is for my spiritual perfection and my spiritual growth. However, I also realized that if I was led to do something in meditation, I was led to be of service, that there was going to have to be a part of me which was able to break forward and and and, and work through some of that discomfort and for, for the higher good of all, uh, for the purpose of teaching. So those, those of us who are very sort of secretive about our involvement with the craft and are led to do teaching are in a, in a, a place where we have to get a little courageous sometimes, and, uh, and that's what we do. Now, from a magical perspective, if you are working, I've talked about this before, but I think it, it bears repeating, that if you're working on something, a goal, uh, maybe, maybe you're working on even a goal of, of maybe, maybe you have an illness or something like that that you're trying to heal, prosperity, maybe you're working on, maybe you're working on a love relationship spell to, to, to draw your perfect mate in, into your life. Maybe you're working on, on a spell for a new job or a new home or a new car. Maybe you're working on a spell to bring um, more peace in your in your family environment. To, to uh, Maybe you're doing a spell to work on your own psychic awareness or to uh, create a more radiant aura within yourself. Whatever you're working on, they're all wonderful goals, but they're your sacred goals. And you want the power to thrive within the magic itself, not within you blabbing about how wonderful you are, how powerful you are, and look at what, what neat spell I'm doing. Right? Because believe me, there's there's several reasons for this. Okay, first of all, we talked about how, how keeping something secret is making it sacred. We don't want any shame-based secrets. We never want to hold on to something that has any sense of shame, but something that's wonderful, some goal that you're working on. You don't want to blab about that because you want all that power to, to flow forth into manifestation, into the manifestation of your goal, not into the manifestation of your wagging jaw, right? So we want to keep our mouths shut about stuff that we're working on so that we can give it power, we can hold, we can build that power up and it can burst forth into manifestation, into materialization, rather than into the materialization of our, our words. Also say, you know, no, there's, a, there's a misconception about, about magic and free will that I think it bears um, clearing up here also. We say that you never want to do a spell for somebody unless they've asked you to do it and maybe even paid for it, you've done some kind of exchange, because we don't want to go out and, and cast spells on someone, even if we think it's good for them. We don't want to tell them that we don't want to do, to do a spell for healing. We don't want to do a spell for anything even good for somebody unless they've asked for it. Okay, we understand that. Free will, fine. But that's not to say that you it, that it's that it's that it's not okay for you to give blessing to somebody. There's a difference between saying I'm giving you blessing and saying, and this is how I want you to to I want the blessing to manifest in your life. Does that make sense? So we we it's okay to bless someone. It's okay to 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 even visualize them happy, whole, healthy, and fulfilled. 
and allow the manifestation of that be whatever they want it to be. We don't we don't get involved in what it's supposed to look like, but it's okay for us to visualize to visualize blessing and 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 love going forth into somebody else's life. There's nothing wrong with that. But you don't want to tell everybody you're doing that either because then that just takes away from it. The same thing goes for when when you you're you're giving and you're doing kind things for somebody. If you want it to be powerful, if you want it to be powerful that you're giving money to a homeless person or you're giving giving money to Greenpeace or that you um are are that uh, that you paid for the coffee of, for somebody behind you at the at the Starbucks. So you're doing something kind for someone. You don't tell everybody you did it. That takes all of the blessing away. It like totally sucks it back out. When you do something kind for somebody, you keep your mouth shut. When you when you give blessing, when you do some sort of some sort of charity work, when you work at a soup kitchen, when you do when you protest for uh, the um the, at, at a nuclear energy plant, when you do any of those kinds of things that you feel led to do, that your heart, that the goddess or the god or whatever the spirit within you is is leading you to do. You didn't go out and tell everybody, look how fabulous I am, look what I did today. That t- that takes all the power away from it. It takes all of the all of the beauty away from it. No, you keep that secret. You keep that sacred so that it can have even more power and more manifestation and 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 create even better change in the world. Somebody asked me if if is it okay for my husband or wife to not know that I'm involved in the craft? And I say, that's not for me to say. That's between you and the goddess. That's between you and spirit. You have to determine that for yourself. But I personally do not see anything wrong with that. Because the way I look at it is this. Everyone has a right to information that affects them. Everyone has a right to information that affects them. If your involvement with the craft has no effect on anyone else, then it's up to you whether how how much how how secret you want to keep that involvement. Again, are you ashamed of it or is it something that you want to keep secret and sacred? Are you trying to keep it secret in order to in order to protect the sanctity of that which you're involved with by not sullying it with having to defend it? Or is it that you are ashamed of what you are doing? If there's shame involved with your secret, it's not going to serve you or anybody. But no, the way but my, my bottom line is that, that I do not need to let anybody in on any part of my life that is none of their business. And I'm sorry, I don't care how close you are to somebody, there are certain things that aren't anyone's business, that it's just between you and spirit. It, it, and it's okay to have sacred space held that nobody else gets to come into. It's not only okay, but it's essential for our spiritual wholeness. Now, there's also the, the, the idea that, that sometimes we get together and do magic as groups. Maybe you're involved in a, a formal group like a coven, or, or some kind of spiritual fellowship. Or maybe you just get together, you know, sort of casually, um, and it's not as, as formal of a thing. And you all come together and you work magic for each other on each other's behalf. Well, you need to realize that it's very powerful if the group has some sort of agreement on the fact that nobody gets to talk about what was done there. Because if they're not willing to do that, Why are you willing to share your secrets with them? Why are you willing to entrust your sacred goals with people who are not willing to give you a solemn promise or oath, as we would say in some of the more formalized versions of this, that they're not going to talk about what goes on when you are together, right? So if I have a special sacred goal that I'm working on, I don't want anybody to know about it unless they're working on it with me 
and I'm working on their goals with them so that we've given each other support and that nobody owes anybody anything. We are in there as a cooperative effort, and it's completely um, copacetic so that when we leave there, we know everybody's mouths are staying shut. In in, uh, some of the Kabbalistic traditions, they have a a power symbol. There's a power gesture that called the sign of silence, where it looks like somebody's going, you know, putting their, their, their fingers up to their mouth and going, shh, right? And that's the sign of silence. And that sign of silence is a reminder that secrecy equals sacredness, and that we do not talk about that which goes on within the magic circle. We do not talk about, we do not discuss that which is occult, that which is esoteric. Now that gives us another layer of the the wonder of secrecy, is there is occult means hidden, secret, or sacred, because secret and sacred are the same thing. So there are certain truths which cannot be spoken, there, is so, there, there are certain esoteric truths which are so secret that words cannot describe them. And this is where the whole concept of the name of God in like the Hebrew faith and many other faiths, that the, there's a certain name of God that cannot be spoken. Well, exoterically, yes, there's a certain there's certain ways to 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 say the name of God in certain traditions or the the, the name of the of creation. We're not talking about patriarchal God. We're talking about the name of of of, of prime co- primal cause that we that 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 this tradition agrees upon the specific name for God and that nobody's allowed to say it. That nobody's either allowed to say it out loud or they're not allowed to say it outside of a particular ritual. Okay, that's that's one exoteric version of that truth, and that's fine. But esoterically, the name of God cannot be spoken because it's beyond words. It's truly occult. It's truly esoteric. And that's the ultimate in sacredness is primal creation, the prime cause, the original cause, or what people might call God. That's, it's very interesting to, to understand that ineffable means unspeakable. So the ineffable name of God, esoterically speaking, means that there are certain truths in this universe which are beyond language beyond that which can be spoken. And to try to discuss certain things and to try to, 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 to bring certain concepts into, into words is considered blasphemy. And the reason why it's considered blasphemy is not because you're bad. It's because the, the whole concept of, of language is so archaic and so profane that it can't describe sacred truth. So those kinds of sacred truths are so secret that you could only even understand them within the confines of your meditations, within the the, uh, experience of one-on-one inspiration with your guide, your teacher, your your true self, um, spirit, the spirit within you, however, however you, whatever words you can use to, to describe that. Because words are very clumsy things when it comes to true esotericism. So I think it's very important for us to look into our lives and see what's what are we what are we keeping secret? What are we what are we trying to hold sacred? Now, anything that we have within our lives that we are ashamed of or guilty about, we need to find someone somewhere that we can speak those truths to, so that we are not holding on to parts of ourselves which are actually diseased parts of our thinking. We do not want to make sacred that which is shameful, that which is guilt-ridden, that which uh, does not serve us. And at the same time, we have to understand that there are certain parts of our lives which are contrary to what modern culture teaches us, are nobody's business but ours. 
nobody's business but ours. And it's okay for us to take back our power, to reclaim our our ability to hold sacred, and to say, you know what, there's certain things that nobody gets that nobody but but my but my relationship with spirit has claimed to. Nobody gets to hear these things. Nobody gets to know certain parts of me. And that's not only okay, but it's essential to our spiritual growth, our spiritual oneness, and our spiritual perfection. Now you can look at this in reverse. What's not working in your life right now? Okay, well. What are you, what secrets are you holding that do not serve you? What are you making sacred? What do you feel ashamed of? What do you feel guilty about? What's, what doesn't feel good to you? Well, find somebody to talk to about it. Find somebody to tell this to. You want to get that out. You want to get it spoken. You want to take the charge off of it. You want to disperse that energy. You want to dissipate all of that power and you want it to be gone. And one of the fastest ways to do that is to talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. And that's the true uh, power in psychotherapy is that you get to keep ta- or, or 12-step groups or, any, or support groups, any of that, um, or confessionals or all of that stuff. You want to talk about that, which is not working. And, and not only talk about what's not working, but why, why it's not working. What are you holding on to? What diseased thinking are you holding on to that you are so ashamed of? First of all, get it written down on paper. Write it down. Write it all out. Get it all out on paper. And then find somebody that you trust. Find somebody that you trust. And the two of you can hold it sacred. The two of you can keep it secret. You don't have to broadcast it to the world. And we understand that that's not wise for, 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 all, of your, for all of your sick secrets to be broadcast to the world. But, but, but if you have a confidant that, that, that you know, maybe it's a therapist, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's, maybe it's um, a lover, maybe it's a great friend, maybe it's a priest or priestess, somebody, somebody somewhere that you can just dump on, and they're okay with that, and they are well-equipped to deal with that, and they're well-equipped well to say, you know what, this is not who you are. We, we, we let go of this diseased thinking together. We are going to come together, and we are going to affirm that all of this stuff, that it, you're letting it out, you're, you're getting it up, it's on its way out. If it's on its way up, it's on its way out. And the, the fact of you speaking this to release it, we are now reclaiming your right to divinity, your right to healthy thinking, your right to whatever it is in its stead, your right to prosperity, your right to, um, your right to love, your right to health. Right? So what's not working in your life? Find what sick secret you're holding on to that has something to do with that and talk about it. Get it out. Get it out there. The opposite of that is when you have a goal, don't talk about it to people, except for maybe that one or two or three people that you work with magically together on goals together. And then then you all keep it secret and sacred. But if you're working solitary magic, no way. You hold on to that. You don't let anybody know what's going on. Once it manifests, everybody will get it. Everybody, the, the, the cat will be out of the bag once it manifests. You get that million dollars, believe me, people will get that. You get that perfect mate, people will get it. People will know what happened. But by then, it's fine because it's manifest. It doesn't need to be secret anymore. Does that make sense? It's fun. Secrecy is fun stuff because it's so powerful. We get to really get down to the nuts and bolts of what magic is really all about. Now, again, when somebody talks to you and says, how are you doing? I'm not saying that you want to just blab and blab and blab about how awful you are. That's not, that's not wise. You don't need to tell everybody all of what's going on that you don't like about your life. That's not powerful. In fact, that will have a counterproductive effect on you because everybody will then start talking about you in regards to this story that you're telling, right? So yes, you need one, two, three, maybe friends or a therapist or somebody. When somebody says, how are you doing? You can say, oh, it's horrible. It's awful. And then just get it all get it all out. Somebody enlightened, somebody that, that knows how to, how to deal with it in a positive way. You start getting into telling everybody this and start, and start um, 
spewing your your secrets to the to the universe it's your your ability to have quality relationships with people will be highly diminished because people don't want to hear this people don't want to hear about it right so so you got to know where when you are getting rid of a secret where it's safe to do that and that's just the same way with as um like with your your spiritual path we always say you know it's good to have a have a good have a good relationship with your spirit guide or your mental teacher your inner teacher right your inner guru whatever you can call that so that when when you come up with a at a crossroads and you don't know what decision to make rather than saying yes or no to this person you have to say you know I'll get back to you because you know you have to go into meditation and ask your guide to ask your teacher, to ask your inner teacher, your mental, te- your mental teacher. But you don't tell people this. You don't say, hey, I got to go talk to my mental teacher and I'll get back to you. They're going to look at you like you're, freak- like you're a freak. That's not what you want to do. In fact, it's, it's a good idea to not let anybody know what you're doing. It's a, be- it's a, it's a really good idea not to make anybody nervous. Because you don't want to deal with all of that. You want to deal with, with, with still waters, which run deep. And that's who you are. You want to be the still water, which runs deep. Not this crazy person that everybody wants to run away from because they think they're a freak. Because they believe in the fairies, and they believe in the mental teacher, and they believe in the, you know, the elementals, and the gods, and the goddesses, and the magic, and the witchcraft, and the broomsticks, and you know? Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, life is a lot easier if people think that you are just like they are, because then you don't have to, there's one less thing to have to deal with. It's one less thing. It, life is hard enough. It's, it's difficult in this world to just, to just survive going from day to day to day and letting life be easy. You want to put a wrench in it by talking about witchcraft to people? They don't get it. They don't want to get it. They're going to think you're a devil worshiper, and then you got to go back and tell them, oh, no, 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 it's very positive, and it's all about the goddess. Oh, the goddess. Oh, no, no, no. You don't need to get into these conversations with people. <laughs> Believe me, it's much nicer if things just go smoothly in your life. So secrecy is a fantastic asset to have. We have to know when to use it and when not to use it. Where we, what we want to make sacred and what we want to give power to and where we want to withdraw power and where we want to not try to make something sacred and to try to, and try to dispel the power by taking secrecy away from certain things. Thank you so much for joining me today. Blessed be. 